back everyone. I'm out at camp this morning and uh, I'm going to be doing something a little different today. Uh, I'm going to be doing some bass fishing which isn't anything different but I'm going to be trying to catch them by trolling lures behind the boat. I thought it would make an interesting video. I started uh, trolling back a few years ago. The reason why is at the time the motor we used to have for our boat ended up overheating and then uh, so we, we had like a couple years or so where we didn't have a boat motor so what I do is I'd either use a kayak or a canoe or sometimes I just use an electric motor in, our, in the uh, motorboat most people have motorboats when they go out fishing they'll hop to different spots around the lake and you know you don't really have that luxury when you're when you're paddling or using like an electric trolling motor so what I would do is I would just throw a lure out behind the boat either while I was paddling or using an electric trolling motor and then I found out you can catch a lot of good fish that way and before that I, I knew my lake pretty well but I found out a lot of good areas that I probably wouldn't have found out if I wasn't trolling lures so I'm gonna get the boat ready and we're gonna head out so I uh, wanted to Lures I like to use. It's right here, good old fashioned uh, floating Rapala. Usually the uh, black silver color like this works really well. And uh, the gold and black works pretty well too. It runs about two, three feet deep or so. And this lake here isn't really that deep of a lake. Around the shorelines, it's probably four to six feet and then starts dropping off to maybe eight maybe even ten feet in some spots and we can also use um, probably in the uh, in the spring dives to six or just any type of crankbait that goes about six feet uh, some of the places where it's a little deeper out here I might use this thing is this time of year it's August some you know since spring weeds have grown up from the bottom a little so uh, you might be snagging weeds along the bottom so if that's the case you know I use like this one because this one's supposed to go down to like four and uh, one thing I do is uh, I have that rod holder there I usually just set it in that rod holder and then at times I might throw out another lure and just hold it in my hand. If you're going to set it in a rod holder though, what I do is I turn the drag down enough so you can pull it off pretty easily by hand because you don't want your drag super tight because if you get it caught up on the bottom you uh, you might end up breaking your line or your rod maybe. <laughs> so you, you don't want it too loose either because um, you want to be able to have the fish almost hook itself. So I'm going to start off with this one right here. And uh, I have an electric trolling motor. It has five speeds. Usually about the third speed is usually good enough. And you can use a gas motor too. Just at a low idle speed works fine. Um, usually what I do is I just do a full cast out behind the boat. Maybe let out a little bit more line too. One thing you want to watch is your uh, the rod tip. Usually... Uh, when you have a lure on, you'll see like the rod tip will have a slight bend and it'll bounce like that from the action of the lure. And that's how you know everything's that your lure is running right. If you see it like slightly bent and it's not bouncing around anymore, it usually means you've caught on to a weed. Finally, nothing uh, spectacular, just a little sunfish. Another thing is, I, I like to, to use lures that uh, when you pause them they'll float back up to the top. So that if you're, if you're running two lines and you hook a fish on one, you can uh, land the fish without the other one. So you don't have to worry about the other one sinking down to the bottom, getting stuck. Going on now. It's a pretty nice one right there. There it goes. Doesn't 
some eagle harassing some loons. Well, a uh, an eagle just swooped down and grabbed one of the loons' little babies there. Kind of a sad thing to see, but that's nature. You know, eagles have to eat too, so. All right, here we go. Just a little one. Nothing big. It's barely on there. Another little one. Catching them though, at least. Pretty cool birdhouse there. I think it's for ducks. There we go. Alright, got one on here. I was just about ready to take it out of the holder and uh, move it to another spot. This one's a nice one. Another good one. About the same size as the other one. So that's one. That one's about 18 inches. He's had enough of me. Something is swimming pretty fast through the water right there. I'm not sure if that was a fish or a loon. That was pretty cool. I was looking out in front of the boat. I just saw this thing move. Swim right past the boat. I guess it was uh, that loon. I was gonna say if that was a fish, that thing was huge. I think it's only the second time I've ever seen a loon swim under the water. It's a pretty cool thing to see. So that's it for this video. I was honestly hoping to catch some more fish than I did, but caught a few of those small ones there and caught a couple decent ones too. So as you can see, uh, it's a pretty effective way to catch bass. So it ended up being not too bad of a day uh, it, it was supposed to be an 80% chance of rain while I was out there and it didn't rain at all. So uh, I think that's a first for me. So it was good that uh, the rain held off and it was nice and cool today and overcast. Good comfortable weather to fish in. So I hope you liked the video. Hopefully uh, you learned something from it. Thanks for watching. Until next time.